Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Robert Coho Epstein. I'd like to uh, start out by complaining a little bit about things that have been bothering me. Um, So I was trying to wrap a package to bring it to the post office. And it just seemed like pulling teeth to try to get this thing wrapped. The tape was sticking in my fingers and it wasn't tearing the right way. And when I wrapped part of the package, there was tape sticking out. It was just terrible. And um, then I got to the post office and they said that I could not mail the package the way that I had it wrapped because I was trying to mail first class mail in a priority mailbox. So that was very frustrating. I had to go back home, take everything out of the box. I couldn't get the box open even though I was using a scissor. And I finally got the stuff out of the box, put it into another box, taped it up again, the label ripped. I had to tape the label back together. And I went back to the post office and mailed it. And I, I was, uh, feeling very unhappy with the whole thing because it was just frustrating and annoying from beginning to end. So that's one thing that happened to me that I wanted to complain about. Um, I had another problem with the package. Um, I got a package with six little things in it and I was gonna, it was great because it was all contained in this little bag. I was gonna carry it upstairs and open it up there. So my daughter opened it downstairs and took all the things out. So now I have to carry them up individually. So that was also frustrating. On a, a kind of heavier area, um, uh, this past August, I had that scare where I had to, I found out I had to have kidney surgery. Um, I had to decide to have kidney surgery. There was a mass in my kidney and my wife and I were terrified. We thought that maybe I was gonna die and we went through the whole scenario of what was gonna to happen to us. And we were terrified for about 24 hours, spoke to the doctor, found out that it was a much more reasonable prognosis and that I only had to be terrified of the surgery, but that I probably wasn't gonna die. So then I was terrified of that and went through an, a, a, a bit of pain and suffering um, through general anesthesia and having these wounds in my body. Um, but I recovered, so that was great. Um, and earlier today, I burned some food. I just thought I'd throw that in. So what do all of these things have in common? They are all in my view, under the umbrella of the main big word that the Buddha used to summarize the kind of baseline experience of our existence, which was called Dukkha. And Dukkha has been translated a few different ways. It's usually translated as suffering. And some people have argued that it should be translated as unsatisfactoriness or dissatisfaction or basically the feeling that there's always something wrong with the moment. There's always something wrong with every situation. Things don't go right, they don't go smoothly, and they don't go the way we want them to or according to plan. And that is the kind of underlying feeling of dukkha that, uh, that Buddha identified and that we often try to ignore, but it's still affecting and bothering us throughout our daily activities. And then there are those big events where we are really scared or really in pain, or we have serious loss, and those are also dukkha. So I feel like dukkha covers that whole range of unsatisfactoriness, dissatisfaction, and various sufferings. And I think that I'm going back to calling it all suffering, because when you have that feeling that something's not right, all the time and it's bothering you or you're always a little frustrated or you're always a little unhappy, that's a kind of incessant suffering. 
that you're undergoing. It's a low grade suffering, but it's very bothersome. And I think that part of what we discover in, in sitting practice and in other practice is that that is a very strong feeling that is, becomes very apparent that we're not in harmony with what is. And it's for some reason for sentient beings, particularly humans, it's very, very difficult to get into sync with what is and accept and reside in it. So all of that is uh, dukkha. Um, so we have two kinds of dukkha, two kinds of suffering that the Buddha identified. Physical suffering and mental, emotional, or you could call it psycho-spiritual suffering. And some people distinguish between those as well and say that physical pain is not dukkha, that it's uh, pain, they distinguish between pain and suffering. I've decided in my uh, middling uh, understanding that you can call all of those suffering because they're all painful. So they're all types of suffering. The painful sufferings that are physical, that come from the body and that are physically experienced can't really be gotten rid of. They, I mean, we can mitigate them to some extent, but we're stuck with physical suffering because we have a physical body. And um, Buddha pointed out in his talk about the two arrows or the two darts that while we're stuck with physical suffering, we make it a lot worse by adding layers of reactivity. And hopefully our practice helps us with that too, but to whatever extent and under normal circumstances, we're usually experiencing not just physical discomfort or frustration or pain, but psycho-spiritual reactivity. So we don't, uh, it's not just that we're hungry and we're wondering when we're gonna, you know, get our meal if it's late, but we're also worried about, worried about it. When are we gonna, you know, have the meal or what is it gonna be like? And is it gonna be cold when we get there? And is it gonna be enough and it's gonna be good? So we have a whole bunch of mental and emotional overlay that we put on top of the physical situation and add to our suffering that way. And uh, some folks have also said, there's a, a kind of fun saying going around that, uh, that you're stuck with physical uh, suffering uh, or that you're stuck with pain, but that suffering is optional. Well, I think that's a little too glib because without really deep practice, and letting go of clinging, craving, and aversion, the things that cause psycho-spiritual reactions, mental and emotional reactions, it's very, very difficult to get rid of that second arrow of suffering, that added overlay of reactivity. So that's one of the things that hopefully is helped by our practice as well. But anyway, we have these two categories of dukkha, physical suffering, and mental emotional suffering. And there's, uh, there's that distinction between pain and suffering that some people make. I prefer to think of it all as different kinds of suffering because they all hurt. Um, and just to clarify what's included in that, um, there's actually a pretty good rundown of what is included in those two types of suffering. There are eight types of suffering or causes of suffering that are outlined by the Buddha and the Buddha loved to make lists. And um, this particular list is split between the physical and the mental and emotional. And there's four in the physical list and four in the mental emotional list. So it's, it's a very nice list. Um, and here are the categories because people often, you know, they sometimes argue or worry or wonder or are confused about what's included in dukkha and what kind of suffering uh, was the Buddha talking about. So here's how it breaks down. The physical suffering or the physical dukkha um, includes four very familiar categories. Birth is considered painful. 
and the source of suffering because without a physical body, you don't really suffer that much. Um, birth, aging, sickness, and death. Those are the four biggies. Um, we could say that aging can be represented as the whole lifespan. There's a, a, a fun saying that I, I heard, which I like, um, I'm in that awkward stage between birth and death. And I thought that was kind of cute. And um, that awkward stage between birth and death is the whole aging process. We're aging the whole way through. We have pain, getting our bearings and developing a basic self, uh, getting conditioned by our culture, whatever it happens to be. Um, then experiencing puberty and the joys of of uh, of of uh, lacks of lack of skill in dating and mating. Um, if we're lucky, we eventually settle down with somebody and fight with them. And um, then we experience various sicknesses and infirmities along the way. Eventually, we get. Uh, life gets more painful, the physical body gets more painful. Even the Buddha complained about it and said his body was like an old cart that he was ready to trade in because it creaked when it moved and hurt whenever he was, uh, the only time he had relief, he said, from that physical pain in the Parinibbana Sutta is when he went into the fourth jhana, and, uh, which was the highest of the uh, physical jhanas, the before the form, formless uh, Arupa jhanas. Um, and that's a pretty high jhana. If you have to go to the fourth jhana to get out of your physical pain, most people are not gonna be able to do that. So those are the, uh, the physical uh, pain, sources of pain, uh, basically the whole physical lifespan. And the four mental emotional categories of dukkha are also really interesting because we don't always outline them separation from loved ones, contact with people we dislike or despise. These are all sources of pain. Suffering caused by desires that can't be satisfied or fulfilled. And having experiences that we don't like, painful experiences through the senses and the mind, um, experiences through the skandhas. So these are the other categories of suffering of the body. These are basically suffering of the mind. And um, I think we're probably all familiar with all of those forms of sufferings, but it's interesting that the Buddha actually spoke about those, that we have thoughts and feelings that kind of torment us, that we actually have painful experiences when we're separated from our loved ones. We know that one, but having to tolerate people that we have to deal with that we really don't enjoy being with is also a source of real pain. So again, we have attachment to the people we want to be around, clinging and craving, and aversion to the people we don't want to be around, trying not to have to experience them. And again, it's all in this, these, especially the psycho-spiritual uh, pains are caused by wanting things to be different than the way they are, not being able to embrace the actuality of what is at the given moment. So through practice, perhaps we can learn to tolerate and embrace and even enjoy um, some of these experiences that we have, even if they're not perfect and even if they sometimes go against what we want or expect and not to be as attached to uh, expectations, which are then painful when they're thwarted, um, memories that we wish had turned out differently and that we cling to wanting to change them and can't let go of them, and come in for a landing in the moment. If we're able to stay a little more calm in the middle of the storm, to face what exists and not spin out our thoughts and feelings as much, with uh, mental and emotional reactions to the way things are. We can deal with things more calmly and not spend so much of our time stressed out and upset. 
the ultimate goal of Buddhism and Zen may be to see through the delusions about ourselves and ourself as beings and thus cut the root of suffering. But our practice can also help us along the way to stay with reality and embrace it more instead of running away from it and stay relatively calm in the face of life's changing events. Thank you. Thank you.